Hi everyone, it's Peter Schiff. It is Friday, June 4th, 2010. Well, a big down day in the stock market today. The Dow dropped better than 300 points. We closed uh, well under 10,000 level. I think this is the lowest the Dow has closed really, I think, since February. You know, the, the, the market started off on the defensive. Uh, there were concerns about debt issues in Hungary. Now, Hungary is in Europe, but it's not part of the euro. But certainly it is raising more concerns about uh, sovereign credit risk, which eventually are going to work their way up to the food chain and include the United States. But the market was already weak. And then we got the jobs data uh, from May. And of course, most people on Wall Street, they still believe that the economy is actually recovering. Uh, so they're expecting robust employment numbers. And every time we get uh, disappointing numbers, the market sells off. Now, I don't know when people are going to figure out that there is no recovery. I've been talking about this for a long time. GDP is growing, but that's not because the economy is growing. That's because we're going deeper into debt. We're borrowing money to grow the government, and so consumers can spend more money that they don't have. We're only digging ourselves into a deeper hole. Eventually, the world is going to figure that out. In the meantime, when you get a negative number, uh, the, 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 the rosy scenario is questioned, and the market sells off. Today, we got the news that we did create about 431,000 jobs last month, but the problem was 421,000 of them were census workers hired by the U.S. government. Now, of course, people you know, counting the census, they don't add any real productivity to our economy. They just as what well, might as well be staying home collecting unemployment checks. But these jobs, of course, are only temporary. And, you know, I also read an article this week on online. I forget the publication it was in, but it said that the way they record these census worker jobs, the census hires somebody to work for a week, and that's counted as a job. Now, when that week is over, if they decide to hire that guy again to work another week, well, that's a second job. So many of these census jobs are the same people getting hired two or three times uh, during, during the cycle. But in any event, they're, they're not real jobs. The private sector only created about 40,000 jobs, which was a lot less than the analysts had been looking for. I think they were looking for 150 to 200,000 jobs. And it rec represents a, a big contraction from the pace of private sector job growth in the preceding month. Uh, so it shows that the economy is slipping back into recession, which should not be any new news for anybody who understands economics, but it certainly uh, is big news for Wall Street. Now also, when the stock market sold off, in typical fashion, everything else sold off, including foreign currencies, uh, commodities like oil was down three dollars a barrel copper hit a, a new multi-month low the only thing that rose other than the Japanese yen uh, was gold and gold was up about another ten dollars an ounce it made a new high in terms of the euro in fact the Dow Jones is now worth just 8.3 ounces of gold that's only about four percent above its low from March of 2009 when the Dow was only at 6500 you know now it's at 9900 so it's substantially higher in phony money, dollars, but it's a lot lower in, in real money, uh, gold. But, you know, at some point in time, this is going to change. Right now, bad news on the U.S. economy helps the dollar versus other currencies because when there's bad news on the economy, everybody sells stocks and they pile in the dollars. Now, of course, from a fundamental sense, this makes no sense at all to do because the U.S. economy suffers from a global slowdown. We actually suffer more than other economies. Our budget deficit is going to be much bigger if the economy is slowing down, fewer people have jobs, the budget deficit is bigger, the U.S. has to borrow more money, we get another stimulus, more reckless spending, more borrowing, more money printing. All that is negative for the dollar in the long run. The fact that the dollar is rallying right now is just a short-term market operation. And if you're smart, you want to fade that uh, by selling into the dollar strength, by buying these other currencies uh, that are losing value and, and continuing to buy Gold. Now, one opportunity I think is really there, in my opinion, right now, is in oil. You know, oil prices fell over three dollars a barrel today. They're just over seventy-one or seventy-two dollars a barrel. But if you look at what happened with this major oil spill uh, from BP in the Gulf of Mexico, apart from the environmental impact and you know the human tragedy involved here, the impact on the oil market is going to be severe. Not only because we're all this oil is spilling into the Gulf instead of you know, on tankers on routes. Uh, you know, for gas stations. But President Obama has decided to impose a six-month moratorium on deep sea drilling. Now, normally, with the oil loss with the spill and all the lost production from a six-month moratorium, 
oil prices would be going through the roof right now. The only reason they're not is because of the, 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 the rest of the sell-off, the broad-based sell-off around the world in equities, uh, the relative strength of the dollar versus other uh, currencies, the fears about the European contagion, and all this. This is trumping the very, very bullish news for oil. But I think once we, we, we get a bottom in the markets, once the decline stops, once the dollar resumes its descent, I think you're going to see a huge increase in, in the price of oil. And when people start to factor in what this means, this six-month moratorium, because not only is this going to interrupt uh, production for six months, but you know all these wells, all this equipment, you know the, the, the drilling equipment that's in the Gulf, and this is expensive equipment to, to drill you know, in the deep water. This stuff, these rigs aren't going to sit there for six months waiting for the moratorium to be over. They're going to get involved in contracts, you know, in Africa, you know, in Asia, up in Scandinavia, you know, they're going to leave. They're not going to stay there. And these new contracts, you know, they might be two or three year uh, commitments. So even when the moratorium is over, we're still not going to have the production in the Gulf that we had before. This is going to make the United States even more dependent on foreign oil. Than, than it is now. It's going to run up our trade deficit. People who were working on those rigs are now going to be unemployed. Who knows what they're going to do, but they're not going to be doing something as productive as helping get oil. And you know, the main reason that we're drilling in this deep water is because of all the environmental regulations uh, that, that prevent us from drilling in shallow water closer to shore because nobody wants to see the rigs. And we're not drilling onshore like up in Anwar. So as a result of all that, we end up drilling in deep water. We take all these risks. Now we have this spill. We have an even bigger environmental problem. And now we're going to have a bigger energy problem in this country. So it's going to be a delayed reaction. But once oil prices really start to take off, maybe we get back above $100 a barrel and the pump price really starts to pick up, that's you know another nail in the coffin of this phony recovery. And so no one's talking about that. One more thing I just want to speak about before I go. I happened to watch on the Sunday morning uh, shows last weekend. Uh, Con Congressman Alan Grayson has a bill uh, to mandate paid leave, uh, paid vacation in the United States. And they're talking about, oh, all the Europeans, it's great. You know, they get, you know, three weeks paid vacation, five weeks paid vacation. And the government needs to mandate paid vacations here. Now, first of all, they're trying to argue that it's actually in the best interest of these companies. Uh, because it makes their workers more productive. If that really were true, they would do it on their own. But the reality is nobody gets something for nothing. When Europeans are getting five months paid vacation, they're not getting it for free. They're earning less money. Their employers are paying them a lot less money for the weeks that they work to make up for the weeks that they get paid when they don't work. And so if Congress is able to mandate paid vacations for Americans, they're not going to get them for free. Even though the employers are paying for them, they're going to have their wages reduced to offset the fact that now they're taking time off. You see, this doesn't give you any new rights. Any individual worker right now is free to negotiate with his employer. If you would prefer to have time off as opposed to wages, you can strike that deal. You can tell your boss, hey, I'd like to have two weeks off, so why don't you pay me a little bit less money every week that I work so that you save up enough and you can keep paying me for the weeks that I don't work. What happens when Congress mandates a vacation is now you don't have the choice. You can't take money instead of vacation time, now you're required to take the vacation even if you'd rather have the money. And so what happens is some people need the money, what do they end up doing? They moonlight, they get a job on their vacation. A lot of people do that in Europe, a lot of people who have five weeks off, they don't just take five weeks off, they'll get, they get a job and they earn some money. They'd probably rather work for their same employer, but the law makes that illegal so they have to earn less money moonlight. And that's exactly what would happen here. Of course, it plays well at the polls when a politician says, vote for me and I'm going to mandate a paid vacation. I'm going to make your greedy boss give you a, a free vacation with pay. It doesn't work like that. Nothing is free. You know, it, you have to be able to justify what you paid based on your productivity. And if you don't have more productivity and your employer is going to pay you in time off, then the way he offsets that is he gives you lower wages. And of course, these are the unintended consequences that I'm always talking about of government action. But the politicians never think two or three steps behind. They're only do thinking about doing what's popular, what helps get them elected. And promising paid vacations, time off for free, gets you, a, gets you a vote, but it doesn't actually get you a raise. It actually diminishes your choices. It doesn't increase your choices. You lose freedoms, you don't gain freedoms. Anyway, that's it for today. Have a great weekend, everybody. Take care.